Consider the refrigerator. Why do most households in North America and Western culture, for that matter, have one? Well, in general, it keeps food fresh and flavorful. However, in the case of the three ingredients that go into today's dish, it tends to make them stale and bland. So, what, what dish are we talking about? Why bruschetta, of course. Ugh. Welcome to the basics. The three hallmark ingredients of bruschetta are bread. Bruschetta is an Italian recipe, but I like to mix my cultures and go with a French baguette for the bread. I like the taste of it, and I find when I cut it, I get the right sizes for appetizer portions out of it. Really, you want to pick any kind of crusty loaf. So Italian loaf works fine. Ciabatta is another good one as well. You're going to need a serrated knife. That means that it's got a rough edge on it that's gonna cut through that crusty layer of the loaf. And we're gonna take it and we're actually going to cut on what's called the bias. So that means you're gonna cut at an angle on the bread. And we wanna make medallions that are about one inch thick. And we're gonna need probably about a dozen of those. So that's 12 of them, which should take up a good portion of a traditional loaf. Tomatoes. Choose a tomato that you like the flavor of. They come in thousands of varieties. I have a medium sized one here. I think it's got better flavor. Uh, you go with what you like. And then you need your sharpest knife for this. If you don't have a really sharp knife, use a serrated knife. There's nothing worse than trying to cut through your tomato and ending up with mush because it can't get through the skin. So I'm going to take my tomato here and I'm going to cut it in half first. So I go right through the stem there. And then I'm carefully going to use a V cut in order to eliminate the stem portion from my tomato. I'm going to do that on both sides. And then one half at a time, I'm going to dice my tomato. A dice is basically a cube that we're making out of it. So I'm going to cut lengthwise and make cuts that are about half an inch, maybe a little bit smaller, and then turn my tomato perpendicular and cut again to make those cubes. Repeat this process for all the tomatoes you have. You'll need about four medium-sized tomatoes or about two large tomatoes for this. And fresh basil. <sighs> I am by no means a gardener. I have failed at more things I've tried to grow than I can count. Carrots? Fail. Brussels sprouts? Fail. Lettuce? Mostly fail. But one thing I can grow is basil. This is dark or opal basil. It's my favorite of the varieties. It comes in a number of different ones. If you go looking for fresh basil in your grocery store, it is not going to be with the rest of the fresh herbs. They're probably in a refrigerated section somewhere nestled in with your fruits and vegetables. This will be probably close to your tomatoes. Why? Well, one, it goes well with tomatoes, as we're discovering today. And two, we don't want to refrigerate it. You refrigerate basil, and it will go all brown and tasteless for you. So keep this stuff out of the fridge. If you can, find a pot of it. They usually grow them or, uh, and sell them around the beginning of the season for about $5 each. And that will give you basil as long as you want it. Either keep it in the pot or throw it in the ground. And if you do that, you can continue to grow your basil. When you harvest it, you're going to want to take and harvest the top bunch. Pinch it right off or use a pair of scissors to get it off. And this way, it will encourage underneath the leaves here to branch out and create more of a bush for you instead of a tall stalk. Resist the urge to take these ones down here, the nice big leaves, because they will produce more bunches as they grow. This is my cinnamon basil, and it's actually starting to flower here. Typically, the flowers come out purple, um, no matter what the variety of your basil. 
what you want to do there to encourage your basil to continue to grow nice leaves, you're going to actually pinch off the whole section that includes the flower there. The flowers are actually edible. They taste a little bit more like licorice than the leaves do, but they're still good in all sorts of things. So take that, put it in a soup or on a pizza, and then your bush will continue to grow more and more leaves. We're going to cut the basil into a chiffonade, which is basically tiny little ribbons. To do that, we need to first remove all the leaves from the stem. And then we're going to stack them up on top of each other. Put the largest leaves on the bottom and stack up from there. Once you've accomplished that, we take and we roll the leaves lengthwise. And then take your knife and carefully chop right through until we get these tiny little ribbons. Now, while we're going to respect tradition here, we're not going to follow it exactly, partly because we want to keep this simple and partly because that's my taste. So to this, we're also going to add salt, freshly ground black pepper, a little bit of minced garlic, and a good balsamic vinegar. Typically, you would do this all in an oven, and that's what I used to do, until I spent a month in a friend's basement, and all I had to cook on was a toaster oven. And I realized the versatility of this beautiful baby instrument. And now I do my bruschetta entirely in the toaster oven. So let's get to cooking. First, we're gonna take our diced tomatoes and we're gonna add to that a half of a teaspoon of salt. We're doing this first because we wanna add the salt so it will draw some of the moisture out of the tomatoes. And I'm gonna use a slotted spoon for my mixing today. If you don't have a slotted spoon of this sort, then maybe use a fork as well. The, the reason for that will become evident a little bit later. Give it a mix around, and then we're gonna set that aside for a couple of minutes while we deal with our bread. For me, the size of my toaster oven here requires that I do this in two batches. So I'm going to take my grate and I'm going to add first my first half dozen pieces of bread to that. And then I'm going to throw that back in the toaster and I'm going to toast it. While those are toasting, let's deal with our tomatoes here. I'm going to add now my basil to it. And just a few small other ingredients. We don't want to overwhelm these beautiful flavors here, so I'm going light with the rest. I'm going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper to that, and a quarter of a teaspoon of minced garlic. Some people like it more garlicky. If you want, you can add more than that, but I find I don't want to overwhelm it and be stinking of garlic for the rest of the day. So I just go with a quarter teaspoon. And then finally, we're going to add two teaspoons of good balsamic vinegar. And then make sure that is all nicely combined. It does not hurt that mixture to sit for a minute or two while you finish off your bread. Now take the tray from your toaster oven and add six pieces of your baguette to it. Again, this is what fits in my toaster oven. Then before I add my beautiful bruschetta mix to it, I'm going to take and drizzle just a little more of my balsamic vinegar on it. To do that, I take and put my thumb mostly over the top of it and then shake and pour just a little bit. I just want a few drops on there just to enhance that balsamic flavor. Traditionally, you would do olive oil and a rub of garlic. This is just my taste. Now, I'm going to take, with my slotted spoon, because I don't see all that extra juice that's at the bottom there, I don't actually want that because it's gonna make my bread soggy. That's no good. So I'm going to take and strain that off a little bit and then just carefully lay that on top of my bread. Do that for each piece. Once you've got that on there, 
we're going to throw it back in our toaster oven. This time, we want to set it to the broiler setting. The broiler setting is when you only have heat coming from the top, not from the bottom of it. And we're just going to finish that off so that we warm up this bruschetta topping and give it a final little toasting. Well, don't pull that out too quick. Your patience will be rewarded. So in the meantime, why not store the ingredients or the leftovers in the fridge? Well, I already told you about the basil. Tomatoes have enzymes in them. And when they get too cold, like in a refrigerator, those enzymes die a horrible death and you'll lose some of that beautiful aroma and flavor. Bread should never be kept in the fridge. It goes stale quicker. Yes, it will have less of a tendency to mold, but it'll be all dry and crumbly. So if you have to, freeze your bread and then bring it back to room temperature and use it immediately. Never put your bruschetta in the fridge. Ah, fresh, fragrant, flavorful, tastes like summer. So until next time, remember, the fridge is your friend, unless you're making bruschetta. Mm -hmm.